And welcome back to News On. I now want to bring in the president of programming and Real America's Voice host, Dr. Gina Loudon, who is live at Liberty University for Liberty University's Networking the Nations Summit. Uh, so tell us a little bit about where you are and what's on the agenda today, because it sounds like a jam-packed event. It is, Miranda. It's called the 300 CEOs event, and our good friend that we used to do a lot of work with together, Miranda, Jack Brewer, is the one who Love is, uh, I believe, sort of the guru that put this together. Love him. And uh, Liberty University is hosting it, and it is a lot of focus on what do we do now, now that we are not going to be in a Trump economy, at least for the time being. Um, where do CEOs focus their efforts in technology, in international business, um, in all of those things, which is right up my alley because a lot of my background has to do with business psychology. So it's about the decisions uh, that CEOs will be making and about how business moves forward and what has become a completely opposite, flipped on its head kind of an economy from what everybody was used to and planning for in the Trump economy. Yeah, we were uh, just talking about your money, meaning all of us watching um, the issue that's concerning a lot of people, inflation. But speaking of businesses, Here's a story that's uh, catching some attention here, uh, turning to the world of critical race theory. American Express Corporation is now launching a critical race theory training program. The program will teach employees that capitalism, frankly, is racist. Kind of interesting that it's coming from this particular business, but the program also tells employees that they should deconstruct racial and sexual identities and rank themselves on a hierarchy of privilege. Uh, this just almost, it baffles me a little bit, again, that American Express, of all companies, what are your thoughts on this and what are people there? How are they reacting to this? Yeah, this is this is devastating. Um, I I'm I feel especially bad for their shareholders whose money is being used to conduct seminars, Miranda, where they are dividing people up by race and gender and uh, all of those things, and and forcing them to qualify themselves as privileged or. Um, unprivileged, uh, basically oppressed. And uh, this is the kind of thing that can really just shatter, um, you know, a, a company's standing in, 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 yeah. in, the, in the markets. And so, so a lot of people are very upset about this. Myself, I'm upset because I am, Amex is my card. It's the card that I use the most. And uh, that will have to change if they're going to continue these sorts of things. Because I think we really have to talk with our pocketbooks today and make ourselves very clear as consumers where we're going to draw the line and racism is not acceptable and critical race theory is racist and I don't think anyone um, that ha has that understands our past could possibly think it's okay to divide people up by race and force them into categories in a company that is everything antithetical to capitalism. Uh, well, there you heard it, uh, Dr. Gina Loudon uh, giving her take on this story again. Amex now teaching critical race theory. Uh, will you do what Dr. Gina is going to do, and that is maybe get rid of her card? Always curious to know your thoughts for viewers that are watching right now. You can always do that by finding me at Real Miranda Khan. Hashtag share your voice. I know you're going to have some star-studded interviews uh, throughout the day, and you can also tune in to Dr. Gina Loudon's show prime time tonight at seven o'clock eastern time to see some of those cool interviews joining us at liberty university in virginia thank you so much dr gina appreciate it all right as of wednesday we want to get to some health news the centers for disease control and prevention is officially urging pregnant women now to get the covid19 vaccine saying that women are at a higher risk for pregnancy complications and severe illness from the virus also, the booster shot from Pfizer and Moderna are getting the FDA stamp of approval for those that are, you know, immune compromised and the next couple of days. Uh, but those shots, both the first and two doses and now the third dose, are still not FDA approved, causing some hesitancy uh, still from people getting the vaccine. It's only approved for emergency use only. And a possible cause for that delay in authorization might just come from the Biden administration pretty much seemingly dragging its feet and nominating a permanent head of the FDA. And that's where I want to welcome in our bipartisan panel. Joining us now, CEO and founder of Stock Swoosh, Melissa Armo, and mayoral candidate in Tucker, Georgia, 
Democrat Robin Biro. Thank you both. Thank you. I have to get used to that, Robin. Uh, so, no, what too. is what is your uh, your your takeaway on this? Because this is without a doubt the biggest story. This pandemic has been, will continue to be. It has impacted the entire world, turned everything upside down. Why has the president waited? to get someone in this position so it can be fully approved. Because there are people that are saying, ah, I'm gonna wait until that's fully approved, not just for emergency use. You are exactly correct and I share your concerns. Uh, right now, as of right now today, 58.2% of Americans have received at least one dose. Um, the state with the highest vaccination rates is Vermont at only 67.7%. We were told that the, the goal was to get Americans vaccinated up to 70% by July 4th. That, that has long gone now. So I'm concerned I have, uh, it is fair to say that, that we should have received uh, more than just emergency vaccination from approval from the CDC. Uh, so. We've got to get it because vaccine hesitancy is a real thing. I know people in my real life who will not get vaccinated until it has received something other than just emergency approval, Miranda. Yeah, I just, I, I'm just curious, Melissa, because it seems like that should be the priority, right? If that's keeping people from working or going to schools or it's dividing the country, that not this three and a half trillion dollar bill that they're trying to get through should be the priority. Maybe it's just me, but w what do you think? You're absolutely right that unfortunately this the huge massive stimulus bill has taken the forefront and become more of a priority, at least specifically in the last month, than COVID. Even though Biden has been out there doing press conferences almost daily in the last two weeks, he's been talking about COVID, he's been talking about mandates, he's trying to encourage actually private businesses to mandate that people have to get the vaccines to keep their job. But in the meantime, the, the government, the administration should be doing more on their end to convince people of the safety, not forcing people to take it, but giving them the right information or more information so that people feel at ease if in fact they want to take it. And I don't think they've been doing a good enough job about that. In fact, until I read the article today, I wasn't even aware that they hadn't uh, hired right. someone to charge of the FDA. This isn't even something that any news organization is talking about. So I think it's really important that we're talking about it here today. They don't currently have someone in place that's in charge of the FDA. They need to do it. It's a position that needs to be filled with a pandemic going on of health concerns. We're almost full eight months into the year. They need to get this taken care of. And at this point now, they're not even discussing it. Who knows if they'll even have somebody by the end of the year. Yeah, and keeping with the theme of COVID vaccines, California now following New York City's lead and mandating vaccines. California is now the first state to mandate teachers and other school employees be vaccinated or get tested for COVID every week. This order takes effect today and schools have until October 15th to get vaccinated. Uh, real quickly, because we're running out of time on this topic, but Robin, this is something one could almost argue. There's been a lot of talk on vaccine mandates, mask mandates, do this, do that. But the one thing I brought it up the other day with our panel, that it seems like the vast majority of Republicans, you know, our congressional leaders and Democrats do agree on the vaccine being effective. So why not yes. have this push out there? Instead of focusing on mandates and the mask and this, why not say, do this huge campaign where you have Democrats and Republicans coming together? Real quickly to you. I, frankly, I wish that President Trump would have gotten his vaccine in public for public view, but look, I'm, I have to expose my bias. My six-year-old niece, just this week, pediatric cases are up all across the country. I really don't have an issue with teachers being required to get vaccinated. Melissa, last uh, 20 seconds to you on this. I have a problem with any business uh, requiring people to get vaccinated or even people coming as customers, which you're having in New York. Give people the option, give them the choice. In California, they're giving them the option to get weekly tested. I'm fine with that. I don't think, I think people should be allowed to make decisions about what they put inside their own bodies. That is something that I am firm on and I'm not gonna change my mind about that. All right, so you heard what our panel had to say about this issue. We always would love to hear what you have to say. We're going to ask them to stick around because we still have a lot more to talk about, including the 2020 census. It's to be released today, and it could have a huge impact around the country. Find out why.